Hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. What's the deal with these cloth pots? Let's go check these things out. I like to do some container gardening in addition to and to supplement my, my raised beds. And I'm sure that, that you probably do as well. Maybe you just have a, a small space and you gotta do container gardening. Whatever that is, I'm always looking for a cheap way to do that. I've, I've bought five gallon buckets like, like that one right there and I've I've drilled holes in those and I've those have served me very well. You get about, I don't know, five or six years out of a food grade bucket before the sun starts to break down the plastic. And that plastic's real brittle now so I'm looking for other alternatives. So I found these cheap cloth bags. You can buy these under a number of name brands, different colors. Uh, this one actually has a name brand. It's a seven gallon uh, Vivo Sun cloth pot. And basically, these are exceedingly cheap in terms of their uh, make and manufacture, some more than others. And I haven't found much difference between uh, this. This uh, be this is actually one of the better ones I've handled. It's tough. It's uh, it's it's stitching is, is more uh, careful, perhaps quality than this super cheap. This is a, a couple of years old, but it's super cheap where you got all the loose threads hanging off and it's just not that uh, well made but it's well enough made this thing has lasted me along with several like it for many years but i'm going to grow in some of these this year as well and i'll show you how easy it is it's just like using a pot i mean it's almost doesn't even warrant a video but somebody's been asking me do i use cloth pots the answer is yes this is one of my super cheap ones and i have not used this although it's been outside for a long time you can see it's kind of dirty but uh, yeah, th this material holds up really well, even though it's super cheap. So the main benefit of cloth pot is what they call air pruning. When your roots grow into your container, if you're using a traditional plastic container or ceramic container, you know, terracotta pot, something like that, or even a five gallon bucket, you've noticed when you've pulled your plants up, if you've ever done that, is that the roots go down, they grow and oh, they send out all their roots and the tips of those roots meet that plastic wall or that terracotta wall. It's impenetrable and they just start to circle they keep on growing and they grow and they grow and they, they run around and eventually the the root ball down there can get so dense it chokes itself out it doesn't drain well and uh, it's just not good soil health and good root conditioning so air pruning when in a cloth pot the roots meet the wall of the cloth pot the air that that, that is able to come in and out of that wall of that cloth pot literally kills off the tip of the growing tip of that root and it prunes it, it stops its growth. And that encourages the root to send out shoots along its, along its length. And so you've got more shoots coming out. It's a more efficient system and it doesn't get root bound as readily. And so that's what air pruning is good for. It keeps the root system down to a good size, that uh, an efficient size and, and encourages right kind of growth and not root bounding. I guess that's a word, root bounding. <laughs> We're gonna call it a word. So I'm going to try to show you the difference in what a root system looks like in a fig plant. I've got these two fig plants here of similar, uh, similar development. Uh, this is a uh, magnolia, and it's beginning to go dormant, actually. And I suspect that there'll be some, a little bit of root spinning around in the bottom of this, uh, this bucket here. Uh, I up-potted that this spring, so it won't be too root-bound, but you'll at least see how the roots go round and round. While this guy, I can't find my label, uh, but he's been in this cloth pot for uh, probably most of this year as well. So I'm gonna pull this guy out of here. And you can see the discoloration, that's okay. As we pull it up, you notice on this, we don't see any, any roots spinning around here at all. Nothing at all. There's, in fact, there's hardly any roots near the edge of the root ball. You gotta go in there a little bit to get to them. You see some roots down at the bottom. Obviously, they're not in contact with the air or up against the ground. So this is a relatively healthy root system. There's no roots wandering around looking for a way to go. And I can just slide this guy right back in here. I really ought to repot this one. But I'll do that next spring. I'll backfill that a little bit with some soil. Okay, so that's a cloth pot. If we pull up a fig out of a similar size bucket here, there you go. 
you can see the roots come up and begin to circle almost immediately. And they circle around there, and you see all these roots up against the edge traveling around. And the more they do this, because they're not being pruned, they're not being uh, encouraged to not grow around and circle, because, because they're doing this, they can bind themselves up into a thick mass. And that's not a very efficient way of growing plants. So you can see all the roots on the bottom there. This uh, would benefit from a cloth pot, but I'll be up potting this next spring and uh, you'll have a bigger pot to grow in. Now you can grow trees in cloth pots. They make them huge, about uh, 400 gallon bags I've seen. You can put trees in cloth pots and that helps them uh, immensely to uh, not get root bound. So there's the difference between a traditional pot and a cloth pot. I think that uh, I think that illustrates it well. I'm just going to fill this one up with soil. I've got a little spare purple cabbage that's going in here. I'm going to see if cabbage will grow in a seven gallon pot. I don't see why it shouldn't. So basic potting soil, recycled potting soil, straight in there. I'm gonna water this cabbage in with some compost tea. I didn't make this intentionally. I usually don't bother to make compost tea. Just throw your compost on the top of your soil and the rain will make tea for you. Anyway, the rain rained in a compost pile that I have in my wagon and I'd left it out in the rain. So yeah, nice rich fertilization for this cabbage. Now you'll notice that when these things get rained on, these cloth pots, or when you water them, you'll see the water in the sides soak through sometimes, like right there. And that way you can actually tell where your water, how far down your water's getting. And for me, that's very handy in the summertime. I've got some figs in cloth pots, and I need to saturate them in the summer and make sure they're well watered. I like a cloth pot for that. Again, there's some more discoloration on all my cloth pots. And that's okay. I don't mind it. You might mind it, and if you mind it, well, don't use a cloth pot. But these fig plants are probably gonna have better root structure than fig plants in these kind of containers. Thanks for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Like our videos, share our videos. It's been a real good fall. Uh, we've really had a, a, a real upsweep in, in subscriptions, and I'm really grateful. I like our uh, Instagram page and our Facebook page, and we sure like your comments, like to hear from you. It's been real nice to get to know some of you guys in the comment section, and I'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening. Bye-bye.